Hey everybody, it's me, Undead Viking. I want to talk to you about this game. It's called Road to Infamy. In this game, each person is going to be controlling a gang, and they're going to be using their power and influence in the big city to uh, recruit other gangsters to your gang, uh, steal contraband that your uh, that your your gang is looking for, and also bribe a cop to not go after you, but go after your rival gangs. Uh, you'll do this through a bidding process, then you'll be using uh, bidding cards that you'll have a hand of, and you'll play uh, several rounds of it, and then whoever at the very end of the game has the most points will win. Um, it is a very straightforward, but very brutal, uh, at each other's throats type of game, the kind of type of game that I really enjoy. Uh, so let me show you how to play, it shouldn't take very long at all, and then we'll come back here and I'll tell you more about why I've had fun playing Road to Infamy. Alright, cool. All right, this is the game board for Road to Infamy. In this game, you are going to be using bid cards, which are located in this big stack here, uh, to influence these three different things, the cop, uh, the contraband, and the gangster. Uh, at the beginning of the game, in every round, you will flip over the top gangster to reveal uh, what it is. In this, and in this case, the gangster is the recruiter. And so if you get this as uh, the gangster, meaning you get the most influence and, uh, and the highest bid uh, for the red, which is the gangster, um, you will get to take that particular person and have it for the rest of the game. So this one is uh, plus two to your total gangster bid. Uh, and so you would just you know keep that, and it would be just an ongoing effect for the rest of the game. Uh, the other thing is the contraband. At the beginning of the game, you will dig into this bag, and you will take out two tokens, and you will put them on the, those locations. So let's see, we got here a, a chemical and a diamond. And contraband is normally worth one point, but at the beginning of the game you are handed a gang, be it the cartel, the rebels, the hackers, or the bandits. And then depending upon which of these is highlighted, the bandits love jewels, jewels are worth two points for them. The cartel, it's for chemicals, the rebels love guns, and the hackers love intel. And so if you, for every one of those tokens you get for those, uh, you would get two points instead of one. The final person is the cop. This is a corrupt cop that you're going to be bribing. Uh, if you win the bid for the cop, you will get to pick one of these four symbols. At the beginning of the game, the cop isn't looking for anything. He's neutral. But when you win the cop, not only one will the cop not take anything from you that round. Uh, he isn't going to confiscate any, any of your contraband. But you get to pick which one of the different tokens he's going to uh, be looking for for the next round. And so if you're playing against somebody who's got a lot of chemicals, you don't have any, uh, you just go ahead and put that on the chemical. And then the next round, after all is said and done, uh, the cop would then confiscate one chemical from each player. So to play the game, it's pretty simple. What you'll do is you'll each person will start with uh, six of these bid cards. The, and let me just grab these, put these in my hand. And so I'll just show these. They come in the, the, uh, the three different colors, uh, blue, green, and red. Uh, some of these have just numbers, like five. They, they number one through five. Uh, and, you know, and so you can see they have little stacks of money as well as the number. But some of them, the lower number ones in particular, uh, have uh, different abilities. So I have these two getaway cards, I have a gamble, and I have an assassinate. So the gamble card says draw bid from the deck. If it is a three, four, or five, you get to play it. Otherwise, discard it. Uh, the assassinate, uh, discard a gangster for one opponent that has played a red bid this turn. And finally, the getaway, the cop will not take your contraband this turn. So, you know, you get some good cards. Now, at the beginning, you can, if you want, um, discard one card and draw one. We got two getaway cards, so we, we, we discard that one, and we draw another card off the top of the deck. We got another assassinate, but who knows? Maybe it'll come in handy later on. So, what happens in the game is that everybody that's playing, you'll pick a card out of your hand, so let's just, you know, say we want to take this four, and we put it face down like so, and then everybody says one, two, three, reveal, you reveal, and then you place your bid under the spot that you are represented. And so let me just draw one randomly for each other person. So 
they bid four for the gangster, they bid five for the gangster, and they bid three for the cop. And so then you're going to do another round. So you're going to go ahead and look at your cards. Um, you know, maybe we're going to bid for the cop. So we put the one, two, three reveal. We put that down. Randomly draw one over here. Oh, so we got actually a bust that says uh, all cop bids totaling eight or more are disqualified. So if you have a bunch of stuff on the cop, it isn't going to be worth anything. And then let's see here. Oh, uh, deceive. Uh, if you have any three or four or five bids in play, move them to your contraband bid. So, you know, this person played that, and now they moved that over here. They were they led people to believe that they were going after the gangster, but now they just moved it over to the contraband. And then finally, they bid four uh, for the gangster. Now, technically, since I'm drawing randomly, this just may not sound like the best strategy or what have you, but it is what it is. So... And then the final one is I don't want to use the assassinate, so we're gonna we're gonna use gamble, you know, just because hopefully we can get a good bid. So one, two, three, reveal. We're gonna add that to that, keeping it below eight, so we don't have to worry about our cop bid not being valid. And then we're gonna draw one randomly with three, four, five. It is a three, so we get to put them in the gangster. Probably won't do any good, but you know we'll see what happens. And then this person uh, takes uh, mug. And so that would, I don't, if, if they had a contraband token, you could steal one. Uh, they solidified with, uh, with their four to take that one. And finally, three on that gangster. So you do three rounds like I just did. And then you total up the points in each spot. So to begin with the gangster, we have a seven over here, a four over here. The seven gets it. So this player would take the gangster and they would just permanently put that in that location to show that they have a plus two to that, uh, to the uh, gangster uh, total for the rest of the game. Then we're going to go to the contraband. We have a four, which would have been good, but obviously they really went after it. They have a total of 11 because they moved that five over. So they're going to go ahead and claim the contraband and you know, put that over there. And then, you know, uh, you know, take and then this one we you know it's like if if somebody had had a contraband token already when you play it that's when you take it you don't you don't do it when you resolve so we go ahead and put that there and then finally with the cop I had a seven better than either of the other people so what's going to happen is is that I'm going to look at, at the different contraband out there the only two that are out there right now are the 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 uh, the diamond and the chemicals and let's say. Uh, the other player was the cartel, and they're going to get those points out the chemicals. So I'm going to leave it on that spot as far as, because normally at the beginning of the game it's going to be in the middle. You're going to move it to the chemicals, saying the next round, when you go through it all, the cop's going to confiscate a chemical from each player. And so, and then that per player is going to lose that chemical. It should be noted that, like, so the next round, you know, you just flip over another gangster, like so. So it's the crime lord. It says plus three infamy points if you have four of the same contraband type. So you have it at the end of the game. So let's say, like, the next round, let me just purposely do this. It's an intel and a chemical. The cop confiscates before you collect your contraband. So he can't collect something that you're going to get in that particular round. Now, there's one last thing, one last part of the game that I didn't explain. If for whatever reason, uh, you tie for a bid, you have to settle the tie using these brawl cards. Everybody that's tied, you just take these out, and basically you kind of shuffle them, and each person grabs one. You can put them face on the table, you can hold them out like this, whatever. Each person grabs one, and on the backs of the cards, they have a total. One, two, three, or four. Whoever gets the highest number breaks the tie. And that's how you, it's pretty simple and straightforward, uh, and you just do it. So you continue on until you run out of gangsters. The gangster deck is the time, uh, the timing of the game. Once you run out of gangsters, uh, the game is over, and whoever has the most points from their contraband and any other you know cards they may have gotten from the gangster deck will win the game at that point. Uh, like I said, it isn't a very tough game to understand. It is a very straightforward game to play. But because of all the interaction and figuring out what people, who people are, what they're bidding on and what they're going for, and you know, trying to guess what the other people are going to be playing, uh, you know, it is a lot more difficult uh, to put together a winning strategy uh, than it would appear. So, all right, let me talk to you more about what I dig about the game in my conclusion.
For me, Road to Infamy really excels in just the bidding process. Now, there's lots of games out there that have a bidding aspect to them. Um, you know, some of my favorite games have bidding, like uh, New Amsterdam, for example. But those games, the, the bidding isn't secret. Um, you know, it, it's something like, okay, here's this thing you want. I bid three, you bid four, I bid five, you bid six, I bid seven. And so you're trying to figure out, is it worth that many of my gold or coins or goods or cubes or whatever to grab this item? Is it going to pay off in the end? This game is 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 a a I think you think that you think that I think type of game. Now there is some luck involved as far as you know which bidding cards you actually get in, are in your hand, but it also boils down to the idea of trying to figure out what the other players are going after and who is going to be like you're going to be butting heads against uh, when you're like say you want that gangster you know that's out there. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, are you going to does does another person wanted. And the worst thing about this game is when you try to go after something, and this happens obviously in a four-player game, which I think the game excels as a four-player game. When you play four players, one person's going to get caught with nothing. They're going to be you know, holding the bag, so to speak, because there's only three rewards. And that's kind of where I think this game shines, because of the fact that, you know, usually with three players, it just seems like you know, the other player, you know, everybody just kind of splits off. You know, every once in a while, somebody with the right card combo or something will, will like, manage to get, you know, two of the three. And, and obviously, when you're playing with two players, unless somebody just doesn't bother, you know, like, nobody bothers, say, going after the cop one round. Uh, you know, like, somebody's going to get two out of the three uh, rewards. And, you know, and the game plays very good with both the two and the three player version. I just, I really like that four, four player one because there the other players can really work against, like if somebody starts getting in the lead and, and they, you, you can see that they've got a lot of these tokens and they're building their, you know, they're climbing and climbing on top of their uh, player board. Um, you can then start actively with the other players, you know, table talk and what have you, just trying to actually phase them out, you know, trying to prevent them from getting any reward at all, you know, especially any more points, for the, so, so to speak, you know, and so you can, you know, prevent them, you know, you, you can kind of slow down their, their, their climb or, or their, their, you know, shorten their lead. And, and I like that about the game. I like, cause I, I, you know, it, it isn't something where it's just like, okay, well, you know, just like, there's nothing I can do. I can't do anything to stop you. No, you watch what they bid and then you, you react to that bid. And then, and then you try to, you know, alter it. You try to fix it. You try to change it, you know, by, by playing either higher bid cards or by playing bid cards that have special abilities that we're going to, like, you know, disable uh, that player's uh, option, that player, what that, play, that player's goal is. But then, of course, when that's happening, that's when the whole, like, you know, whoa, what am I going after? Do you have any idea? You know, do you think I'm going after this? Um, actually, no, I wasn't, you know, like, remember when I showed you the, during the gameplay, it's like having that card combo that, you know, moves one of your bids over to the other, other option, uh, you know, because you, you see, so you, you lay the, 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 obvious, like, oh, this is what I'm going after, so then people try to combat you, but nope, sorry, actually, I'm going to switch that up and change it, and so, I like that about the game, it, it's got a lot more, you know, thinky to it, if you will, for lack of a better term, uh, than, than you would expect. And and I've always said that when you play a game uh, that that thrives on the, the, the player interaction, I mean, that's when games really kind of open up and, and just become a lot of fun. Uh, because I'm not just, you know, doing the mechanism of the game and then figuring out what I'm doing. I'm actually, like, combating in, you know, a battle of wits, you know, and then trying to, you know, guess, you know, what, what a player's intentions are and, and try to, you know, formulate a strategy to stop that intention and, 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 and you know, hold back uh, their ability to score points. So um, if you like uh, bidding games, if you like, uh, you know, like I said, game, like card games with a great deal of player interaction, I think you're really, really going to enjoy uh, Road to Infamy. Um, it's, it's square on that, like, you know, medium level complexity type game, maybe a little light, uh, but, you know, and, but it, it is a heck of a lot of fun. And, uh, it, like I said, if you dig, like, the gangster or, like, you know, 
criminal criminal theme um that just adds even more to the immersion and and the fun of the game as well so there you go that is uh, road to infamy if you have any questions about the game please ask away i'll be happy to answer those to the best of my ability um, as always i really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and also as always i am the undead viking and i'm going to tell you yes you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day all right till next time bye bye